is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with CoachChick.com.
Hey there, it's Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD. If your skater has games or tournaments or even practices this weekend, you want to make sure that they are paying close attention to their hydration. This chart right here is a fantastic chart to show you that at 100% hydration in their body, well, when their hydration is 100%, they are going to be able to give the maximum effort, right? When they are down 1%, when their body is 1% dehydrated, and at this point they're feeling thirsty, so it could be after a long day at school, when they are only 1% down in what their body needs, they are only going to be able to give 95% when they show up on the ice or when they show up in the gym for off-ice training. This is a huge game changer for your skater. So if you are trying to help your skater make changes uh, in the off season, the first thing I want you to focus on is ensuring that they understand that proper hydration is key and will help them stand above the rest. And it's not about waiting until game day and thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to drink water, I've got to get on the ice in three hours. No, you want to focus on this at least two to three days ahead of the competition date so that their body is full of water and ready to go. Their muscles are 79% water. So I, I wanted to show you this chart because I just love graphics and it really illustrates that, you know, you've got one skater that's paid attention to their hydration. They show up for ice time. They're going to give 100%. You've got another skater that got behind with their hydration. Maybe they were too busy. They didn't listen to their body cues. They didn't think it was important. They're 1% down, and they're going to show up, and they're going to give 95%. Now, clearly, the skater that's able to give 100% on the ice is going to get noticed quicker than the skater that's able to give 95% on the ice. I hope this has been helpful. If you'd like to join the rink this summer, email me at kim at hockeymomrd. Dot com. The rink is where we're going over all kinds of information to help your skater get noticed, stand above the pack, and decrease their fat percentage if need be, and definitely increase their muscle this summer. Go make it a great day. Thanks for listening. Happy skating till next time. Make no mistake about it. Our sport is all about motion. And I've found that I can unbelievably improve a player's skating, their rhythm, their power, and their efficiency with these exclusive off-ice methods. I can also help older players with their explosive strength, toughness, and conditioning. Today's band gym workout is a simple back flow workout. Five exercises, and you're gonna flow from one exercise to the next. Now, a couple things that you wanna go ahead and be aware of for this setup. First and foremost, the setup I'm gonna use is a looped over setup. It's an easy setup, and it's great because if you don't have a pair of bands, this is gonna work out really well to do bilateral training. Secondly, make sure I'm not going to use handles on this. I'm going to hook my hands through the loops so that I can really pull with my back as I'm training. The other thing is, as I'm training with this, to keep tension at this connection right here so the band doesn't slide around inside the other band, I'm always going to have some level of tension on the band. So you're going to see me doing rotational movements. Well, I'm going to keep tension on the band because if I lose tension, the band's gonna slide around, especially during those rotational movements. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Now let's talk reps and sets. I like to go a couple of different ways. One, I like to go ahead and go 10 reps. So 10 reps of each exercise flowing from one to the next. That means I'm gonna go ahead and perform 50 total reps. I'm gonna go ahead then, if need be, and take a short rest about 30 seconds, and then I'm right back at it. 
Now, here's some things that you can do to regress or progress this workout. Number one, you can go ahead and use 10 reps, go through all five exercises, and then take a significant rest, maybe a minute, mid two minutes, and then you're right back at it and hit it again. You can also go ahead and drop your reps to five reps, or you can go ahead and progress it by doing 30 second reps, 30 second work sets. I like that as well, and if I do do that, I'm gonna set it up on my seconds pro so that it talks me through and tells me when to switch. Minimal time is needed to transition. As you're gonna see, it's very easy to flow from one exercise to the next. But that said, guys, if you wanna hit your back quickly and make it really effective, this back flow type workout is gonna be a great way to go ahead and do exactly that. Enjoy today's band gym workout, and as always, Make sure you hit the like button if you do. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my new YouTube channel. By the way, I post a lot of this stuff in small increments on Instagram as well. So if you're not on Instagram, make sure you go ahead and check out the band gym on Instagram. That's it, guys. Enjoy your workout. More importantly, get after that mid-back and start training it with some back flow training approach. Welcome back to the Mind Gym. Get ready to train your brain. Let's go. My name is Shawnee Harley, and I'm a two-time Olympian as an assistant coach with Canada Basketball. Bam! I'm also a mental fitness coach, and I help people train their brain. I help athletes cut through all the confusion and all the noise that's going on in their head. I help them show up as their greatest self on the biggest day, the biggest stage of their life. And because it takes a village, I also work with their parents and coaches. Let's solve this problem of lack of creativity. They're creative in practices, but in games, why do they play like a robot? How can they keep doing the same things they're already good at? Why is there no creativity when it matters most? Let's solve this problem. Well, if you've watched any of my other tips, you know I love to look underneath. So what in the heck is driving this behavior? What's causing this lack of creativity? Well, I think it's a fear. What fear might be holding them back? I'll tell you one of the biggest fears of all athletes that I work with. It's called FOPO. What does that stand for? Kind of like FOMO, but not. It's fear of other people's opinions. Whose opinion are they afraid of? Coaches and parents and their teammates. Definitely the opponents. Oh, and the parents of the opponents as well. Social media is a huge one. Basically, everyone's opinion is making them afraid. Want to know why FOPO kills our creativity? because we are a prisoner. 
To solve this problem of lack of creativity, let's try this analogy. Let's think of opinions like a big pile of rope. When we have this pile of rope, one of two things is going to happen. We're either going to give the rope away or we're going to take it. What I teach athletes is this, take your share of the dang rope, have an opinion. Just because people have an opinion about you, how do you know if it's true if you throw them the entire rope and take none for yourself? Part of having an opinion is the ability to self-reflect. Look in the mirror and see what you see and then have a voice. A voice means what do I think? Do I agree? Do I disagree? If I agree, why? If I disagree, why? In other words, we pull back the rope by asking, what do I think? If you think this is easy, managing FOPO, it isn't. We need courage. This is hard. We need courage to manage people's judgment because it's the only way we can grow. Remember, without fear, there can be no courage. And we can use that courage to help us manage the fear of people's opinions. Three solutions to lack of creativity in games. Number one, stop being a prisoner. Let yourself out of jail. Pull back the rope big time. Then choose courage to manage these fears. Courage is a choice and decisions decide destiny. Hey, I've got some great stuff with mental toughness tips on my website. Here's where you can find me. I'm also on social media. probably never seen anything like this before, especially when it comes to young hockey players. Hi, this is Dennis Chickasola, a Coach Chick, and please let me explain that introduction a bit. You see, even though I've worked with lots of older players, I still respect the youngest ones a lot. I know they want to learn. In fact, most of them are dying to get better. And they usually love it when they're challenged in these ways. Now, you may have already seen the full-length version of this recruiting video featuring my grandson. There's little doubt that he can skate and puck handle and shoot. What you might not know is that he spent about one-third of his time during his earliest years training off the ice and on wheels. Actually, even I was pleasantly surprised many years ago when I initially started experimenting with inline training. And I found that those thick wheels are more stable than blades, so they give a young player a better chance at learning some difficult movements. Secondly, those wheels don't glide as easily as blades, 
so a youngster's stride is really strengthened as he or she attempts to move. Better yet, I've discovered that it's far easier to teach and to use tons of unique training devices away from the ice. And it's especially easy to use all that gear in a facility like the Lakeville Athletic Club. This special program will begin in the Lakeville Mass Facility with our first evening dedicated to just orienting the kids to my way of doing things. I'll have some advice for parents at that time too as I and my staff go out of our way to ease the kids into things. We'll spend the remaining time together greatly enhancing the kids' skating speed, stick handling, attacking skills, and shooting strength. Mainly, I want to concentrate on all the things the youth coaches don't have time for during the winter season. Of course, the ultimate aim of this program is to ready our young students for the ice. So, after 12 hours of off-ice preparation, we're going to take what we've learned in Lakeville and apply it to the ice in Bridgewater, Mass. And trust me, that you're going to see an amazing transformation in your youngster over those five weeks. Finally, it's important that you register early. You'll have to be on my email list to receive those. So be sure to sign up over on the application page. Oh, and I almost forgot. I have two other important names for your youngster during this special program. Confidence is everything when it comes to playing that game. So I'll go out of my way to boost each student's self-esteem. Then, of course, the most important thing might be that each of the kids leave every night with a huge grin on their face.
third one, and this time now we're working with a puck. So coaches, if you watch NHL players or high-level players, sometimes they're carrying the puck with one hand, and sometimes they're accelerating, pardon me, sometimes they're carrying the puck with two hands, and sometimes they're accelerating with one hand. So the coaching point on this now is to move the hand that's not on the stick, but they're going to be having it uh, one hand on the stick all the way down. So the drill looks like this. You've actually got two coaching points. You want them to move that arm the same way, and then you, you want to try to teach them how to push the puck forward with their stick as they, as they arm skate or as they flat skate down the ice. So the coaching points that I use is literally just push the puck, push the puck, push the puck, push the puck, push the puck. Main focus is on this arm. This arm will move, of course, but they're just trying to push the puck. With younger players, it's okay if they look at the puck, look up, look at the puck, look up. So we're trying to get them to move their arm while they're carrying the puck this time. So do you guys understand what to do? Okay, so you're moving this arm a lot. You're moving this arm a lot. Okay, let's, let's, let's see if we can do it. Let's go. Go for it. That's it. Yeah, push the puck. That's it. Push the puck. Watch the blue line, Graham. <laughs> you okay, Graham? Okay, that's it, Harry. Good, good arm movement. Good arm movement. Get down lower so you push the puck lower. That's it. Okay, Graham, keep going, buddy. Keep going. And Harry, let's go one more time, okay? I want to see that arm moving. That's it, that's it, that's it. Pushing your legs, that's it, Graham. Look at Graham's arm move, I love that. That's perfect, that's good arm movement. That's the way NHL players move their arms. Okay, go for it, dude. Push the puck, look up and look down. Look up once in a while, that's it. So these guys did really well with that, didn't lose the puck. Okay, Young Guns, Alex, Kellen, let's try this, you guys. Do you understand what to do? Alex, Kellen, do you understand what to do? Okay, let's go for it. Move that arm. That's it. Try to get it right in front of you, Alex. That's it, Kellen. So it's a little bit more of a challenge for these players, coaches. But they're still doing pretty well. It's actually really good. Kellen, you need a puck, buddy. Oh, okay, you got one there. Yeah, that's good. Go for it. One hand. Move that arm, Kellen. Move that arm. Try to move that arm. See, this is a challenge, coaches, because they have to focus on two things at once. As soon as you put a puck in there, they got to focus really, they got to focus on the puck, and then they also have to focus on their arms. So you might have this has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.